channel. Hey, you know what time it is, no press fam. <laughs> Welcome everyone to another episode of the Beatdown, the segment and channel where two worlds collide. I am your host, Class, and this is my co-host, Biggs, doing it big, baby, and keeping it 100 subs. And if you guys enjoy our content, you know what you can do? You can share, you can like, you can subscribe, or you can turn on your notifications to get the latest episodes, which we always put out every Wednesday. And special shout out to J.O. for recommending this to us. He left it down in the comment section below, so we're giving it to you. And now we... I'll be representing 1998's The Mask of Zorro's Alejandro Moretta, aka Zorro. Okay, brief origin story time. Alejandro Moretta, aka Zorro. Uh, well, let's start off with the fact that he's not the original Zorro. There was another Zorro before him. Um, but obviously there was also a television series Zorro, so I'm just going to go with the 98 story. So, the OG Zorro was at his prime, and Alejandro was a young boy, and his brother were worshipping him at the time. You know, he was saving people's lives, being a hero and everything. And they thought he was going to be here forever, and then one day he just falls off the face of the earth. Uh, something does tragically happen to him where he winds up in jail because he's being imprisoned by a bad villain and all that stuff, but that's neither here or there. We're focusing on Alejandro. So Alejandro doesn't have any guidance at that time as he's growing up. He was a kid at the time when Zorro disappeared and he got older and he became like a young man who started conning people with his brother. In their time conning people, they get into the wrong place, wrong time situation. And um, what do you call it? Alejandro's brother gets killed by a US military captain in front of his very eyes. Um, but he was hiding at the time because he couldn't really do anything and his brother wanted to make sure he uh, escaped. Alejandro wanted revenge, so he was going to get it. He saw an opportunity uh, one day and he was about to go for it, but someone, some old man stops him. Surprisingly, that old man was the original Zorro. He didn't die, he was in jail for so many years and they thought he died and then he escaped. And then he was about to go do his own brand of justice, but then he crosses paths with Alejandro and sees the boy in pain and decides he's going to take him under his wing and to uh, train him to be his new, I guess, his new apprentice to becoming Zorro. And then Alejandro took on the mantle and yeah, that's the brief origin story of Zorro. Okay, powers, abilities, and feats. Let's get into it. So, obviously Alejandro doesn't have any powers, but let's get into the, what he does have. He has a sword and he has a whip that he uses as a kind of like a swinging around Tarzan style kind of swing, uh, whip. <clears throat> he was trained by the legend himself in mastering uh, swordsman skills. Uh, he took on six swordsmen along with an additional captain and their leader of power and still didn't get put down. Okay. Fought a woman who has been who has been trained in sword fighting since she was four years old, and that's not a small feat. Took on four guys by himself. Took down a captain of the United States Army. That's not a small feat, okay? Uh, used a shovel to glide down a dirt hill, and that's actually to show that he can improvise when he sees an inanimate object. He can think on his feet when he needs to. He used a whip to swing around, like I said before, like Tarzan style, which means he was able to kind of like acrobatically fly in some way. Uh, did a swing back around front kick using the whip for momentum. Hopefully you understood all that. And knocked a man's teeth out in the process. I'm also uh, adding the sequels of Zorro. Which I believe is The Legend of Zorro. Which was 2005 if I'm not mistaken. Because uh, you know our, my, the guy I'm going against is, is a pretty top dog. Uh, blinded a sniper only using his signature hat. A giant map he used, uh, it was like a giant map, he used it to uh, create a diversion, to create a distraction so he could escape and he put like a whole bunch of guys underneath it. Took on five men and four of them at one point while dangling on some narrow wood. Okay, ooh, that's crazy. Took another well-trained sword fighter uh, from Spain, I believe, and won. Was able to beat a man with his bare hands, chain... Uh, chained his neck in front of a train while the train was moving in a fast motion. That's crazy, okay? Not a lot of people do. That's kind of superhero level. That's Batman style right there. Jumped a landed a jump and landed a horse onto a moving train. Took out six men on a horse on horseback 
one by one, okay? That is impressive. All right, so now the end game. Okay, so straight up one-on-one -on -one brawl, fight, they lose their sword and they were fighting each other. Zoro was gonna lose because he's got the super soldier serum in him. He's got the super power, or I mean, he's got the super strength and the super speed. Clearly, if you've seen V for Vendetta, you've seen how incredibly fast he is. He killed like a whole bunch of 15 men before they could even reload a weapon. So yeah, I do believe that uh, Zoro's not gonna be able to just take him one on one, but he might be able to slow down his momentum by using his acrobatic skills to his advantage since he is uh, very skilled when it comes to heights and being able to move around in places with a lot of heights and like really like crazy circumstances. So I do believe in a moving train or in a place where there's a lot of like narrow spaces and narrow um, spots that I do believe Zoro might have the upper advantage in that since his footwork is a little more impressive and I don't believe strength and speed is going to be um, an issue in that situation since he can't really use any force while he's dealing with like a very small space or narrow space to kind of dangle on in case he might fall so I do believe Zoro might be able to use his acrobatic skills and his height skills and my mean height meaning that he can go he can go to pretty high places sorry he can go to pretty high places so I do believe that with that height that he's able to adapt to along with being able to acrobatically move I do believe he could put V in a slow momentum and at the same time he might be able to drop him down officially for the count in that way so let's just give that a little credit where credit is due even though Zoro isn't exactly um, super soldier uh, abilities, he does have a kind of a Batman ability. And what I mean by that is, look, he took on six guys on his own. Not a lot of people can say they can take on six guys all at the same time in a sword fight. Um, even and, and then an additional couple of people come up out of nowhere. Like he is great under pressure and being able to adapt. His superhuman ability to fight in different crazy situations, along with the ability to fight more than just one person, and such a very intense pressure. I do got to think that's kind of superhuman in itself. So I do believe. I do believe he's going to keep his, be able to keep his own against V when it comes to a sword fight. If they were to go mano a mano on a sword fight, I do believe Zoro would be able to keep him on his own. Sword skill fight wise, I do believe Zoro could keep him and hold him down in that way, but I don't believe he's going to be able to overpower him completely with just that skill alone. So I would recommend the element of surprise. So this is how Zoro has got to win this. To slow the momentum down, he's got to use heights got to use acrobatic skills and a lot of swinging and moving around to keep V on his toes. On top of that, he's going to have to try to see if he can probably use a sword to kind of cut him at the same time while he's doing all that swinging around just so he can slow that momentum down. Use his sword skills to kind of keep V in a little more of a focus on the skill more than being able to kind of eliminate him with just using a death blow directly at him. And I do believe that last element of surprise and being able to think on his feet using an inanimate object or objects anywhere that comes out of nowhere and being able to like put someone down using a weapon or using using the building itself i do believe zero would probably improvise in that situation he might go somewhere where maybe the buildings are a little more uh, uh dangerous or more uh, old where it'd be much harder to uh maneuver around without it breaking and that gives uh, zoro an upper advantage he might be able to tear the building down in some way maybe using v's own strength to kind of have him tackle him in a uh, get him pissed off and then maybe have him go for a direct a tackle and then maybe break uh, one of the walls that are holding the structure up and then have v have to hold it down and then have zoro b take that advantage of going for directly that direct kill shot with his sword i do believe there's that possibility All right, now I'll be representing 2005's V for Vendetta's V. Ask there is an idea, Mr. Creedy. And ideas are bulletproof. All right, brief origin story time. This one's a crazy one. So, V actually starts off in a mental institution, I guess you can say, or some kind of prison for people uh, who are not exactly regular people or the traditional sense of religion's culture i guess in this way and uh he winds up in this madhouse and eventually one day this madhouse burns down the surprising part is that they did something to v because he does not come he actually comes out of the burning building a new man i guess in that situation so a few years pass 
and he meets a woman named Eve and he actually has a plan in motion and yeah it's to put bring pretty much bring down the system but yeah that's the brief origin story of V. Powers, abilities and feats let's get into it. As you already know his like ultimate weapon is the Sai or Sai sword it's like these uh if you've seen Raphael and the ninja turtles it's his ultimate weapon it's like a pitchfork looking weapon it's a warrior weapon i don't know what they call it but i, I mean i do but i don't know if that if i'm saying it right but yeah uh he has that as his ultimate weapon pretty much doesn't carry around bulletproof vests or anything like that because he is pretty much superhuman so he doesn't really see himself needing it uh he took out five armed police officers with his two side swords I hope I said Sai or Say Swords uh, took on three policemen, one of which he broke his hand while he tried punching his face, and the other with just one punch to the chest flying onto the wall. Okay, he survived a burning building as it was crumbling down into ashes. Yeah. Okay, so this one I thought was one of his impressive feats. 30 rounds in a clip. This is, I, I had to look it up. I'm not sure if this is accurate, but I do believe in the UK there's a for fully automatic weapons. Let's say hypothetically there are 30 rounds in a clip. That means with 14 men shooting directly at him, that means he took at least 420 bullets through and through. Okay? And before they and then before they could reload, he took them all out. Yeah. Took out 15 men before they could reload their weapon. 15 men. Uh, the reason I said 14 is because they were all at that the one the main guy, the 15th guy, was using like a six p six piece shooter, so I didn't count that. But if you want to count that, that's 426 in bullets that he took in before they could reload. He took them out with just using his side swords or his weapon, and uh, yeah, he killed the main guy with his bare hands, like he said he would do. All right, the end game with this one. So without any weapons, straight up raw. Come on, guys. V has got this. He's got super strength. He's got super speed. I mean, he took a guy out with just one punch and hit him through a wall. Uh, put him through a wall. I mean, he's also got the speed enough to get a, a bunch of guys before they could reload. Zero is incredible with a sword, but that super soldier serum pretty much, you can say, is it's going to give him that top feat to go mano and mano with him. So I, would rec I, I do believe that V has his number. If they were to lose their swords and it was just a straight fight, yeah, I think V's got his number on that way. Distance might help Zoro some way but it might also not help him uh if he turns his back for a moment against v that's kind of not a good idea it's a total exposure moment or an opportunity for v to throw his side swords or his weapon at him you know like he does he throws it like daggers and he aims with pretty good precision and speed and with the force he throws it's got to be a pretty huge impact so even if he doesn't get him in the heart or in the head and he gets him somewhere around his chest or his legs or just his arms or his torso or he gets a uh, he gets a uh, he cuts an artery or something like that i do believe that that's going to put zoro at a weakened state we still zoro is human and blood coming out of you at an a lot alarming rate is going to slow you down a lot and it's going to put v and the moment to kind of shark smell blood moment and take the advantage and and chomp his teeth into uh, zoro in that way i also I didn't I forgot to mention he also has a second one. He didn't even if he just throws the first one and he gets one part of him, the second one's gonna get the job done. Okay, so let's put that in. Let's just add that. On top of that, sword fight wise or sword wise, look unless Zoro has invented some kind of experimental poison that rapidly slows a superhuman's ability down. It's not really gonna do much. He took. 400 bullets okay swords are not gonna do are not gonna really do a lot of damage you would have to cut him like a bajillion times a million times just i'm exaggerating on the number because it would be probably impossible to put v down even if he were to stab him or cut him and even to have a lot of those openings to do it while v is still up and ready to go and good to go yeah i gotta say uh yeah there's no way you can put him down in that way i don't believe swords are going to be enough to kind of put v down even if this was a straight up fight, even if he lost his sword, I do believe that V could just easily put the sword right into him because he's strong enough to take enough bullets that he could just take the sword from him and then bang his, hit his head, headbutt him, take the sword away, bam, and then just strangle him to death with his bare hands. Remember, V is super strong too. So even if this wasn't a straight up skill fight, sword fight, yeah, V still has it. My final point is this. Zoro does have skills when it comes to sword fighting. He's fought multiple men and all simultaneously. Yes, he's got like a Batman level ability to him. But it's going to get overpowered. 
okay, by a man who actually does have supernatural abilities or super ser super serum abilities. Okay, he's super fast, he's super strong. That's gonna eventually overpower Zoro no matter how much skills he has. It, with V's skill in fighting, along with his super abilities, I do believe he's gonna put him down. He's gonna overpower Zoro, take the sword away from him, or it's speed enough to outsword him and then get that death blow. And yeah, V for Vendetta would actually stand for a W now. As always, no press fam, it's not up to me. It's not up to Biggs, it's up to you guys. So if you guys like my argument, you know what you can do, you can hashtag Zoro. And if you like my argument, you know what you can do, you can hashtag V for Vendetta. And as always, no press fam, we really appreciate you guys. Catch you guys later, peace.